A series of lectures by Professor George Phillies, based on his book, Phenomenology of Polymer Solution Dynamics, Cambridge University Press, 2011. And stand by for our forthcoming lecture series, Statistical Mechanics, Introduction to Mechanics, Harmonic Oscillation, and Game Design. Phenomenology of polymer solution dynamics represents much of a decade's work. I began with a four-drawer filing cabinet full of reprints, a half-dozen shelf feet of books and review articles, reduced the data to 1.4 gigs of memory, all sorts of things, and then did the writing. 500 pages, 374 figures, available in fall of 2011. My major objective in writing the book was to answer a very straightforward question. What does experiment actually tell us about how polymers move in the solution and about how polymers actually physically affect polymer solution properties? There were a wide range of ways to arrange the book and put different topics into it. Some of the other books I had on my shelf followed some of those different paths. Because I followed the path I did and made the choices I did, Phenomenology of Polymer Solution Dynamics has a range of new topics, new interpretations, new choices of things to discuss. Most of this lecture, however, will be focused on organization, how I arranged the book to present the information I found and to show the conclusions that arose from that information. What were my objectives in writing this book? First, I wanted to focus on experiment, showing what nature is actually telling us about polymers and how they affect solution properties. Second, I wanted to be very systematic, covering all of the different sorts of experiments that have been used to study polymer solution properties. Third, I wanted to be very systematic in covering the literature, showing what has been done by a wide range of different research groups. And finally, I wanted to ensure that there was a uniform path of representing results and that the results had been analyzed in a uniform and systematic way. Corresponding to each of those objectives, there was also a set of alternative objectives. Instead of letting experiment lead me to the answer, I could have said, I'm out to prove a model and I know which model I'm going to prove. Instead of looking at a wide range of experimental methods, I could have said self-diffusion, viscosity, viscoelasticity, that's obviously good enough. Instead of systematically searching the entire literature and trying to put most of it into the book, I could have said, I'll choose a few representative problems. That approach never works because no matter which representative studies you choose, people are going to say you cherry-picked the studies to prove your point. Finally, instead of saying we will do a complete reanalysis of the literature on each experiment and get everything systematic, I could simply have reproduced figures from journal articles. You're entitled to do that, but that makes it much harder to see what is going on. There are certainly some very different paths that could have been used to write this book. I could have written a book that talked about dilute solutions, skipped over to melts, and left the huge and very interesting region in between almost untouched. I could have written a book that reviewed theory, dropped in a few measurements here and there, and come to a stop. I could have written a book that took one experimental technique after the next, discussed the theory of the technique, discussed experimental issues that arise in applying the technique. I didn't do any of those. Instead, I did the book that will be going on sale this fall. Every writing project must come to a conclusion, or it will simply go on forever. To bring this project to an end, several topics had to be omitted. I say very little about the complex and wonderful polyelectrolyte phenomena, 
Biopolymers, for the most part, are not discussed. Rod-like polymers have interesting properties that are omitted. Micelles that grow into extremely long threads basically are not discussed. Melts we reach because sometimes solution studies get there. Liquid crystal systems are not treated. Theory of polymer dynamics and theory of experimental methods are also omitted. Because some topics were omitted, others could be included. I inc include in particular the first substantial review of the optical probe diffusion method, which has been around for nearly 40 years now. I include a review of electrophoresis and how it can be used to study polymer dynamics. I include a discussion of colloids. After all, colloids and random coil polymers are subject to the same intermolecular forces, and therefore the difference from dynamics can arise only from their shape. I treat nonlinear dynamics, not only the older issues that arise because the stress tensor gains interesting diagonal components, but also modern effects such as large angle methods. And of course, I do experiment first and theory last. And now we come to the organization of the book which will be the topic of the next lecture.